The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers Podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Travelers Podcast. We are at episode four. I'm Sol, one of your co-hosts. And I am Hayden, the other of your co-hosts. <laughs> All right, so this episode is going to be a bit more light than the past episodes, I guess. So. I reckon, yeah. Um, so in this one, you know, as travelers, we all have incredible good stories, good and bad stories about airport and air airplane. And um, yeah, in this one, we're going to give you some of our most memorable mm -hmm. souvenirs souvenirs yes exactly souvenirs. Yeah. memorable souvenirs when it comes to um this place that we love airplane <laughs> yeah airplanes you know what i mean yeah, well to an extent <laughs> yes <laughs> can't say i've fallen in love with airplanes but i get you all right but uh ladies and gentlemen with the pause button as the emergency exit on your device should you need a break to stop laughing we will be getting our uh, CTP flight in your ears with a cheeky question. Yeah, so, I'm ready. <laughs> uh, which conspiracy theory do you think is actually real? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> is it really a cheeky question? I don't know. It felt cheeky to me because um, now people can pick on you. <laughs> what I think... So, okay. I'm not a big conspiracy theory fan, but there's actually one conspiracy theory that I'm all in. And I don't even know the name, but I do think really deep in my heart. Jeez, okay. Um, that pharmaceutical companies are actually paying the government <laughs> to tell the government, that, the government that we still need to eat um, meat and eggs and all that stuff to be healthy you know they're recommended uh you reckon it's come from the pharmaceuticals something like that yeah definitely hmm. because that's why people are getting sick well i think i think <laughs> that's why people are getting sick because they just eat shit you know what i mean 100 percent. and so when people are sick what do they do what do they need? They need drugs. They need drugs. They need pills because it's not true that they're going to change their eating habits because the government are telling them, well, to eat healthy, you need this, this and that. That's actually pretty good. I was, uh, I was, I was having something a little bit more like fluffy, like, I don't know, aliens are like politicians. No, 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 no. And like, the earth is actually flat. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But yeah. It was a really cheeky question. Oh, no. I'm sure you're disappointed by my answer. No, actually, I like it was a lot deeper than I was expecting. You really dove into it, and I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, well, it's because I believe in this conspiracy theory. I think it's probably because of the show we watched. Every uh, you are what you, you eat what you on eat. Netflix. Highly recommend. Highly so recommend. good. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I would have to say that the reason that was so good is because it wasn't biased towards being vegan. It just showed you just the flat out numbers yeah. as to why veganism is slightly better, aka yeah. very, very much yeah. better. Anyway, when you're, you're, we're not a healthy uh, podcast, we're not a, you know, no, no, a healthy vegan podcast. podcast, but let's move on, shall we? Yes, shall we? Shall we? So to break the ice about like today's episode, I found online... <laughs> people's biggest pet peeves 30,000 feet in the air okay yep all right okay so it's an actual survey that happened in the states mm, everything happens in the states everything happened in the states nothing ha happens outside so 
what what we're gonna do don't read my phone okay so there's actually seven stuff uh yep. that people are complaining about about sorry is that all um but they are ranked there are more but they are ranked from oh, okay. seven to number one all gotcha, right gotcha. so we're gonna start with the lowest amount of complaints and tell me what you think about it or <laughs> okay. if you have a story all right so n ranking number seven is people forcing small talk with you oh uh i mean i'm a very chatty person so you are so sometimes if I'm bored, I will be that person. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> and, I, <laughs> fuck. and I was about to say, I fucking hate those. Like, if you have nothing to say, just don't talk to me, mate. Like, dude. Yeah, but sometimes, particularly if I know I'm like on a, like an English, an Anglophone sort of uh, yeah. flight. Like, if I see something corny or like, you say something corny about it. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm mm -hmm. really terrible with bad jokes, as you are yeah. acutely aware. Oh, uh, so, you are that person. Not often. Not often. If I'm if I'm traveling by myself, I'm fine. Usually, if I've got an inner story, I want to say yeah. something, I'm gonna say it to you, and then you get annoyed, and the other person who I was talking about doesn't. So that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But like when <laughs> when you were traveling alone, when I was traveling alone. I got very confident at like to, particularly with people that were around my age, to mm -hmm. just sort of, like, probably ask about a backpack or a camera or something that I was actually yeah. interested in. Or like where you're going. Is it really small talk though? Well, some people might consider it small talk. Like it's not like I'm going to say what nice weather it is today outside at I mean... 30,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some people do it. I've experienced it and really? it's the worst thing ever. Like, you know me, I hate small talk. Oh yeah. I just, it's so tiring. I really hate it. So if I'm stuck next to a person that is like number one small talker i'm like it's the worst flight ever uh, for me it's a, a small baby that just feels like screaming the entire time oh talking about that actually it's yeah it's really funny so on this same um how do you call it no, survey. survey thank you very much there's a question that is who would you rather sit next to on a flight so you have two choices okay a fighting couple or a crying baby I'd love to sit next to a fighting couple. Seriously. Dude, that'd be hilarious. But did you know that actually 55% of Americans would rather sit next to a crying baby than a fighting couple? No. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. You'd rather have your ears pierced with noise than like <laughs> have something to yeah. talk about. But like I'm trying to think about, because I've never had that level of argument. Like I'm just yeah. sort of thinking like something out of a sitcom where it's like, yeah. you know, dramatic and you know, peanuts are flying around the, the cabin. Yeah, but some people don't have, like, that awareness. The thing is, I I would prefer next to a crying baby because it's not the baby's fault. You know, it's the baby's only way of communicating. Mm. But a fighting couple, they are grown-ass adults. Yeah. They should know it's not the time to have an argument mm. or fight. Yeah, but because it's such a rarity, I don't think I've ever really seen it. That that's why I would sit next to them because I would I would want to bear witness and just sort of go I saw this on a plane once. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. That would be funny, but I don't want to sit next to them. Oh, if it's if it's a sixteen hour flight and they're arguing the yeah. entire way, I mean, it gets tough. Yeah, but take a long okay. way leap out. Of the Let's continue the same like would you rather? Okay, okay, okay. and then we'll go back to our ranking R really really quickly. Okay. Um, would you rather sit next to a dog or a baby? A dog, hundred okay. percent a dog. Same. 54% what 54% of Americans would rather sit next to a dog well yeah why isn't it higher I don't, I don't know <laughs> unless uh, all right unless you're that allergic is... to unless you're allergic to dogs or you have an innate fear yeah. of dogs sitting next to a dog is the greatest thing because the only the, the worst thing that happens is either it barks a bit or it farts <laughs> I mean yeah and, and like Humans can do that as yeah, well. Yeah, but like dogs, are, that would make I me know. so like. It's a really surprising. So, yeah, only fifty-four. Yeah, percentage. Yeah, right. And last, would you rather sit um next to a non-stop talker, or or someone that has bad body odor? Give me the talker. Give me the talker. I, I, I can eventually find the words to yeah. tell the person to stop, but you can't tell someone to stop smelling. Yeah, so, and I mean... Oh, man. Three quarter of the people that took the survey would 
prefer sitting next to a non-stop talker. Yeah. Yeah. I sense of smell would just be Yes. Yes. I've sat next to multiple people that has bad body odor. Me. Surprisingly, no, not you, and surprisingly, oh. they were all men. That's they surprising. were all men. Well, no, okay. Yeah, okay. It's not surprising. <laughs> but hmm. it's still disgusting. Okay. Why? Why are men? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get a generalization. Here we go. Well, yeah. okay. Why are men on flights? Not everyone. Not all men, okay? Some men. Some. Anyway, the one I sat next to. Why are they not taking care of their hygiene, especially on the flight? You're stuck to a person for, what, between 1 and 16 hours? It's so long. Baby. It's so long. Take care of yourself, mate. You're not alone. All right. Ready to go back to our ranking? Yeah, sure. So we went to number seven, but then number six, someone asking to, to change seats with you. I have never cared yeah. about changing. Yeah. I th most of the time, because of, like traveling by yourself, I'm, like I might have a bit of a like a, a peeve about moving from an aisle seat into either the window mm -hmm. or the middle seat. Yeah. I mean, I prefer to be in the in the aisle in the in the window seat, but it doesn't really phase me if I know that the person has like you know mm -hmm. something that doesn't phase me at all. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Unless I paid for my seat. Yeah, like a, like extra legroom, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> someone's asking you. Like, I'm like Big Joe. Big Joe's just like, oh my, do you mind if I just nick his? Do you have a spare eighty dollars? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I would. Yeah, if you're paying for your seat, I understand why you would be bothered if like mm. someone asked you. But eh, I would put it number seven. Not I, number I wouldn't seven. even put in the top ten. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. I mean, someone someone is asking, someone is mm. giving it a shot. Yeah, you can say no. You don't have to say yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've had like, you know, a family that they were split up over the plane and they asked if their like seven or eight year old daughter could sit in my spot to swap. So then she was closer to the mum. I was like, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. That's fine. Yeah. I get it. Of course. Rather than sit like, you know, 10 rows in front. Like I'm by myself. Exactly. Even better. Yeah. 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 I mean, a trick though. Like, because sometimes I'm the one asking if we can change seats. Mm -hmm. But that's only because when you can book seats for free, especially when uh, I'm with you, I would book the aisle and the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with it. Yeah. So it means that if the plane isn't packed, it's less than likely than someone's going to book the a middle seat. On their own. Yeah, so best case scenario, you've got the whole whole row, whole row for like you mm. and your partner or the person you're with. And worst case scenario, scenario, someone is stuck in the middle, and no one wants to be stuck in the middle. So you ask them to switch, and I'm either the one in the middle or you, mm. and the other person wins. Yeah, like better seat, you know. Yeah, no, it's a nice little travel hack actually for traveling in couples. If you want yeah. to get like that extra space, there's yeah. there is a possible chance, not guaranteed, yeah. possible chance. Okay, number five, crowding the gate before the flight is ready to board. <laughs> of course, it's just like the getting off the plane is yeah. the second it lands. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I I guess because it doesn't like it. It's my choice to stand in line. Yeah. Like it doesn't phase me yeah. that much if. I've no, I know that on some flights you like they do it by order, so then it's not mm -hmm. so packed at different points. Yeah. But if you are uh, say in you know section C, and you don't go on until section F, by the time that you go on with section F, mm -hmm. of the plane, everyone else in your area is already sat down. Yeah. So then you can just organize this. You might not have baggage spots, but yeah, like right above you. But mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if people want to stand up. And just their presence starts to annoy me. I'm the one that's got problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, number four, people standing in the walkways blocking others' paths. It depends what they're standing in the hallway for, because if they're just standing there talking to someone and you say, "Hey, excuse me," there's like, "Oh," and then they make no movement to try and do that really awkward pelvic press against the seat you're talking to. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Can we talk about the pelvic press? <laughs> How awkward it is. Like, I I can't even count the amount of people. It's either you, yeah, it's either the front or the back. And, like, you either shove your butt into someone's face or the, your pelvis, yeah. the front of your pelvis. I know. Okay, <laughs> do you prefer having your dick in front of someone's face or your bum? Um... Um, well, pro uh, I don't know. <laughs> and it's only because I can see what's in front of me and I can sort of like, like adjust, you know, probably do the bit of a twist so that way it's not just... Then it's awkward because you look at, if you're facing them, you look at the person looking at your mm. dick. But, that, but, then it, but then you feel like, uh, you feel uh, like you're being disrespectful. You just shove your butt in someone's face and you don't even turn around. Uh, I'm just going to back up here and beep, beep, beep. Just going to shove you. But I prefer <laughs> I prefer pressing my pubis against the seat. Yeah, against the seat. That's fine. Like I, I prefer taking the risk of someone touching my butt and not yeah, you know, that's, my pubis. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. No, you no, said the opposite. I, I don't know if you asked the question you wanted to <laughs> ask in the way you wanted to ask it, but what I'm saying is I'd rather be facing the seat oh, and the have my seat, butt okay. in the aisle. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, now we've got the pelvic press done. Yeah. Uh, but on that, yes. if they make if they make no attempt to move out of the way in any way, shape, or form, regardless of you know how their body is physically shaped, <laughs> but like if if they make no attempt, it feels really annoying. But yeah. then try and shove your way past someone, and then I feel mad for some reason. Um, I almost enjoy it. And, on, well, no, in the sense, if they don't make any effort. And you accidentally break their ankle? Yeah, fair. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Can I say I'm soulless? Ah. ah. <laughs> but, a self-pun. Yes. <laughs> self-pun. Those are rare. I'm... Like, honestly, I have no... Uh, what's the word? Patience. Yeah, that's not the word where you, you can uh, say No that. tolerance? I have no toler tolerance against that. Yeah. No tolerance. I'm not going to make an effort to be careful with you. Because you've made no effort to be careful. I'm going to treat you like the worst piece of shit on, on this plane. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Damn. I'm That's not a rude person, but when it comes to... Like, but... <laughs> but when it comes to that kind of situation... Where you're feeling disrespected just by pure body language? No, it's respect. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Feeling disrespected. Yeah, no, but it's more than just body language. It's just like... Your intention, you see, you see that we're all like cow, we're a bit all cattle. like, yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. a cattle, you know, and you're taking all the spots. I want to go to the bathroom. I'm going to fucking piss myself and you're not even moving. I'm going to be the best uh, quarterback. <laughs> Is it how you call it? <laughs> I'm going to punch you. I'm small, but mm, I've got some muscles. <laughs> yeah, you do have some muscles, but you don't really have a full understanding of the game NFL, and that is fine. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. So, yeah. It never really happened to me that often that mm. someone was just blocking. Yeah, it's 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 rare. Mo most people yeah. have an understanding, like, look, okay, like, if, you're, if there's a line for the toilet, yeah. there's a line for the toilet. Honestly, usually people... Are well behaved, usually. Well behaved. We're, <laughs> we're all children. I'm yes, just I do believe adults are just children, but dressing adult with clothes. wrinkles. I mean. Yes. Anyway, number three. Do you want to take a guess? Uh, standing up the second plane lands. No. Oh, I spoonerism that <laughs> the plane lands, not the not the <laughs> not the planned lanes. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's move on. Uh, no, number three is um, being rude to the airport staff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've got a bone to pick with human beings that do that. Oh, yeah? I do not like it when, so like, particularly if someone is trying their hardest and I can mm -hmm. see that they probably worked a double shift yeah. because they were limited staff and then they've got someone who looks like their, their watch is worth more than they annual, this person's mm. annual salary and they are treating them like dog shit. I know. Yeah. I mean, I don't like it in any setting, but at a, particularly when there's like, you know, the pressure of we have to move mm. like a hundred people. Yeah. And this one person is yeah. just 
raving on at one. I, I, mm. nah, I, I don't like that. I really, really... And I don't know what to do on that, because I'm like, part of me wants to hit them. <laughs> See? Do... You're being soulless as well. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I have a soul for the other person. Yeah. The other person's being soulless. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. But I mean, like, have you seen any instances where, like, someone was just screaming at airport staff or even on the plane? Not... Not screaming at, but being ruined, of course, like at the airport and in the plane, it happens all of the time, yeah. unfortunately. And I'm like, leave the poor person alone. Um, but I guess what's annoying as well is when a staff member is being rude. Oh, yeah, because it goes the other <laughs> way then. Yes. I'm like, oh, <laughs> your job is to be nice. And okay, it's different when the client is being rude like it's okay if the employee is being rude back, back. like like meet sass with sass yes yes but like yeah yeah I mean, some people because it's it, not their day yeah and because they're in a position of power mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the sense like i can either stamp this and you get on the plane or yeah i can say that there was a problem and yeah. you stay here an extra night yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And, or even in the plane it's really annoying yeah it's really true. annoying I, but uh, I don't know if I remember, like... I can't think of, like, an actual instance where that happened. It's all, it's often micro mm. little thing. But, I mean, on TikTok, I've seen so many videos about client being rude towards the mm. stewards and stuff. Yeah, and I, do, I never understand that. Mostly it's in America. Well, yeah, but that's because they're the yeah. only ones that surface on our feed. There could be some that are in Asia that we don't know. No, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that was number three. Uh, number two, which I don't understand why it's there, it's cutting in line. <laughs> I mean, like, it's it, it's the, the, the general respect of, like, not... of. I've been standing here for the last 25 seconds. You stand behind me, sir. Hmm. And it's it's just the the whole idea of flying, uh, queuing up, but you're all getting on the same damn flight. It, exactly. Like if someone cuts in front of me, like you do have that initial, and then afterwards you're like, we're on the same flight. Exactly. Like, like and then like what ends up happening is I'm probably gonna sit next to that dang person anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mm. just gonna let rip. If I have any gas, it's just gonna happen. Oh man, you know what? It was actually in one of the surveys, like, people that find it annoying is, uh, what people find annoying is people that fart. I, I, I hate, if I've got gas in the air, I feel so embarrassed. Yeah, but then they only give you food that makes you fart. That's so I true. don't understand. Yeah. No, they, they, it's, it's riddled with, uh, what is it? Ammonium? Ammonium? Uh, uh. What? Laced with ammonium. Yeah, ammonium. Okay. Yeah, it basically makes it makes you constipated. Yes. Yeah. I, l I learned that through a comedy show. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. But yeah, everyone just wants to fart on a plane. Like, you already yeah. feel bloated and then they give you... Why do you think they have filters on the plane? Like, in the, in, the, in the... in That's gross. There's... Honestly, the smell you have, like, your, your breath or just, like... You just the smell of your clothes after a long flight. Mm. I want to say there's nothing worse, but of course there's, there's other many things that are worse. Yeah, but ugh, the disgust. And then you get out of your, like, I don't know, nine, ten hours flight. It's like 6 a.m. and you can only go to your hostel or hotel at like 4 p.m. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so can I leave my bags here? No. No. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, my sweet. We are now at uh, number, number one. Number I'm sure you know what it is. It's the standing up. Is it the standing up one? No. What? That's worse than that. No, because that's usually the thing everyone that I know of complains of. Uh, losing luggage. No, Hayden. Don't having, yell at me. Having the back of your seat kicked. Ah. Ah. Uh -huh. I got another one to pick on that one. Yeah, oh. yeah go for it. So someone kicking the back of my seat. Yeah. It's tricky because a lot of the time the person that's kicking the back of your seat is not a fully grown adult. It's a child. You'd be surprised. Well, yeah. The worst thing is, being six foot, six foot one, Yeah. I accidentally smashed my knees into the front because, like, <laughs> the, just the length of my femur True. doesn't make it... Like, I can't just fold that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, sure. So, so what do you do when there's a child kicking in your seat? Like, how uh, many chances you give that child? I and the parent. I usually make. I I usually. It, thankfully, it's very rarely happened to me. But I think I would um maybe get up, go to the bathroom, come mm -hmm. back, and say, "Hey, just like because then I because then I'm like standing for a start." Yeah. And I'm not like. <laughs> Don't do that around over yeah. over my shoulder when they yeah. just see this tiny slit. Can't even <laughs> can't even tell if they're bald or with hair. And uh yeah, so it's a little bit easier if you're actually talking face to face with the child. Yeah. Um and maybe even sort of mention like I'd rather talk to the child. I think that's what I would do. Because talking to a parent it's it puts I don't know, I find that parents get a, a rough run when it comes to kids on planes. Yeah, but it depends. Honestly, it depends on the parent. It does. It does. But I feel like if, thankfully, now that I've worked in a, a school, mm -hmm. I feel like I'd be able to communicate with the kid. Hey, like, yeah, like, I see you having a fun time, or the movie's really good, mm -hmm. or whatever. But if you don't mind, please don't kick my chair. Yeah. Like, I won't put the chair back. Just mm -hmm. please don't kick my chair. Yeah. Because the thing that I find annoying is the second the plane like is still on the ground and we're about to take off, the person in front of me, like I'm looking at something on the screen, the person slams their seat back. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Like another another annoying thing, and it has happened to you so often. <laughs> That's why I was laughing with you. The amount of time, <laughs> the amount of time you got freaking smacked with the, per, the 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 seat in front of you because the other person just goes Drops. like Doesn't, there's like, no there's no like gradual like no, no one ever does a gradual it's just like ah. <laughs> yeah, because you need to push yeah you need to push but apparently everyone feels like they need to push like they're about to knock out the person in front of them and most of the time no one notices that they like <laughs> almost broke your break your nose <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember feeling like I wanted to hit them so hard, but I was so stunned I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's def for me, that's more of a pet peeve. Yeah. Like, it's obviously because it, it has affected me a lot more often than someone at the back. Yeah. Because I, I can empathize a lot more when someone just is tall and mm -hmm. is sitting behind me and I've got some knees in the back. Yeah. Fair enough. Like, there's only so much, like, to the side you can do before you realize my spine's turning into an S yeah. and you got to go back the other way. Yeah. So, yeah. But then there's the face being hit, but also when you have your computer sitting on the, um, Oh yeah, true. On the, how do you call it? The tray. On the, the fold -out tray, tray. Yeah. And then the person in front of you just dropped their seat and then it could get oh. hooked on the laptop. And then, yeah, because the, the slot that the, yeah. the seat goes into, it has a groove. Oh, man. And when the when it goes back, the height of the computer screen and the, the yeah. lip of that little groove can yeah. lock. Yeah. And then the person's, like, trying to shove, like... Goes towards it. Oh. <laughs> the amount of heart attack I've had. I think you had one or two when we were Oh, traveling. yeah, two, three times, and I'm like... <laughs> it's, it's a good thing I have good reflexes. <laughs> For me, oh, thankfully that hasn't too happened too often. Yeah. Okay. Now your question. My question. So, after the plan has landed, plane. do you get annoyed when people stand before it's their turn to the plane? To, to disembark off the plane. The um, plane, yeah. D plane. D plane, that's what it says. <laughs> that's good. So, um, do you get annoyed? Yes. Sometimes, particularly when it... Particularly when I'm in the aisle seat and the person on the inside oh, wants to get up and I'm yeah. like, bro, calm, calm where are you down. going? Yeah, calm the fuck down. No, but like sometimes just I just get up just for my legs mm. and it feels good. I don't get up to rush the person in front of me. No, but just the sheer act of standing mm -hmm. puts everyone in this like, <gasps> what, if we, what if we get trapped on the plane, but I'm the only one that's trapped? Remember, I can't. What? I don't know if it was in Mexico or anyway. It was, it was in uh, Latin America, and we were pleasantly surprised by how they worked it out after the plan landed. Do you like, remember? They, they started from the, the front and they did it in stages. The flight attendant, everyone stayed sitting down, 
and the flight yes 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 i remember yeah yeah, yeah yeah the flight attendant went row to row saying okay that's your turn you may rise <laughs> yeah remember and, and it, it was the fastest it was so good yeah it was super fast we got off really quick yeah yeah like there wasn't all this like mm. fiddling and fuddling like there was like because there was the person yeah. telling people to get up if the person needed help there was literally a yeah. staff member to help get the thing down for them exactly it was genius and like just to finish that part of the podcast i just want to say that there's different cultures mm. about how to act on a plane when you embark the plane and when you get out and it depends from country to country and it's really interesting on a sociological point of view it's super super interesting because they're like non-written laws almost that everyone knows mm. every, everyone of the country knows yeah but not the tourist and you look at that from an outsider point of view and you're like wow yeah wow you know and it's really interesting but let's move on to the second part where it's like our most either funniest best or most dramatic plane stories okay now i had i did have yeah one or two and i didn't write them down oh no oh one of them was uh i was in nepal mm -hmm. and we were doing we'd done this hike through the annapurna circuit which passes uh the the hike itself goes over the highest mm -hmm. pass mm -hmm in the world yeah which is awesome just to say that i've even done that it's incredible but on the other side when we were sort of coming back around there's a plane that you could take mm -hmm. at the second stop or something isn't it the most dangerous in the it was country? literally one of the yes. most dangerous in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. and i was like ah oh, it'll be fine and then we were like we got on the plane and i was like I could feel my heart thumping in my ears, like my, oh, yeah. like my mate was like, "Why are we here again?" And I'm like, "I'm honestly not sure, dude." <laughs> and we were like, th "This was that Czech bloke that we met, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, uh, met in Prague." And he, you know, like, hopefully we get there. Like, <laughs> and I've never th the thing is I've never thought about that kind of, I've never thought those thoughts getting onto any plane ever, and that includes like planes I jumped out of. Yeah. So like. Um, the thing that was trippy was the fact the guy, the, the pilot took so long to take off because apparently the weather was dodgy. Yeah. It was like storms and stuff, mm -hmm. like freaking out. They, when we took off, it was fine initially. And mm -hmm. we're like, oh, it's pretty outside. Yeah. And then we went into like fog, mm -hmm. like clouds. Yeah. And then we couldn't see anything. Like out the window, you couldn't see anything. And then what looked like less than 50 meters away from the side of the plane there's just this cliff that just comes oh out and oh 50 meters that's what it felt like it was like <laughs> it was probably a little bit further but honestly i could see all the details oh i could see the goodness. moss on the rocks like i couldn't believe i was just like oh. I, like like i was shaking i was shaking like a leaf i was like we're dead we're dead yeah we are so gone we're yeah. gone Oh. And so, like, and so when it bro when we got through the pass and we made it through the other side, I literally was like, I could feel my like, yeah, like start to relax. And then we, and then I saw the the airport where we we're gonna land. Mm -hmm. the second we landed, I like crumbled. I was like a, bottle, a puddle of water. Of course. Oh, it was course. awesome, but it was terrifying. Damn. So yeah, that's probably yeah. like my number one. I've heard I've heard about this particular flight, and I've seen some videos, and I mean, I'm not a fan of you know the hike is saying no but i'm not a fan of flying since it's been the only i think five years five to six years that i really don't like being on planes mm. which is super weird but that flight i'm like i don't know if i could ever do it once in my life and we, but then but then i'm saying that but you, we had that awful experience with american airlines and i say it now but I don't think I will ever fly with American Airlines again. Oh, wow. Yeah, just because with what we've been through with our experience. So, like, we were flying from Phoenix to Los Cabos in Mexico. We took the first flight. Mm. We took the first flight and then... Um, 
Oh, I forgot. We took the first flight. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were flying. We were halfway there. And then the captain says we need to go back to Phoenix because we have a problem with the plane. And I'm like, holy shit. I was freaking out. They didn't say what was the problem. And like, they kind of turned the plane around, but not like 180 degrees in my head I was being delusional I was like oh my god there's some terrorists on the plane we're not going the right direction like we're gonna die really? yeah and we were not sitting next to each other so I was super scared I was like oh my god this is how this is how it ends alone in the plane <laughs> in the there, in a plane man anyway we landed in Phoenix it was fine uh it ended up being a motor, motor um, well, problem. There was no mechanic that could service the plane in Los Cabos. Yes, because the, because the plane had a motor problem. Anyway, so I think an hour later, we took another plane. <laughs> Do you want to say that part? No, no, no. It's your story. Go. Okay. We took another plane. Then we started, you know, when the plane takes speed. And we started to take off and then... Started to lift, yeah. Yeah, we started to lift and then all of a sudden, the captain just put the brakes. Put the brakes on the plane. And like, we could feel the plane move violently to the left. when And it went... Whoop, and we stopped. We stopped on the airplane uh, highway. I don't know how you say it. The but runway. The runway. And oh my God. I've never been that scared in my entire <laughs> life. And that counts the moment like an hour before. <laughs> yeah. When we turned, we had to turn. Oh, we stayed, I don't know how long in the plane. And then the, the captain, the cap, the captain said um, that he thought there was a, another matter problem. So he had to stop abruptly just in case, you know, we didn't yeah, exactly. take flight and then die again. Um, yes, and then came back to the airport, Phoenix airport, we had like $10 vouchers each because the next flight was, I think, three or four hours after. And then we took a third flight that went well, fortunately, mm -hmm. but everyone was on edge. Well, first, everyone, everyone, everyone was, was drunk. Everyone was drunk. <laughs> and a bit on edge. Honestly, I think... Everyone was a bit in denial. They were like, oh, well, at least we're drunk. If we die, we won't feel a thing, you know? Well, we, we, we drank with some of those people. So. Yes, it was so funny. And when the plan land landed, everyone just started clapping. And I was like, thank God we made it. But yeah. then, the yeah, to get to the hostel is another story for another episode, but... Yeah. Oh, that was, I think that was one of the worst flights I've ever taken in my yeah, life. Yeah, well, that's fair, because honestly, that when the, when the captain hit those brakes oh. and it screeched to a halt, even I was like, that's not normal. Like, yeah, and we actually got out of the airplane to find out that one of the tires was flat. Both the tires. Both tires were flat, which was crazy. Yeah. But yeah, anyway... We didn't have the time to say, like, all of our crazy plane stories, unfortunately. No, we didn't. But We could maybe do a part two eventually. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. But, hey, I hope you enjoyed listening to that. For me, that was a really enjoyable episode. But, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Sol. Thank you very much, Lin L Linners. <laughs> Thank you very much, listeners, for, for joining us on this, uh, on Flight CTP. And, uh, yeah, well... I can't remember what, how to close this out, but if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, follow the uh, the Upshot Project on social media, as well as uh, Cheeky Travelers Podcast, that'd be awesome. Uh, but until next time, guys, thank you very much, and we'll catch you later. Thanks. Bye. bye.